Today, I'm at the world famous Mr. Dog Poop Studios. Mr. Dog Poop wants me, his fix it guy, to install a door here between the sets. So, he ordered some hardware. It's a barn door. We have a giant piece of plywood, a couple two by fours, a handful of tools, and of course our beer. We're gonna see if we can put it up. Instructions. So if you're going to install a barn door in your house, in your barn, in your car, whatever, you need some hardware. Mr. Dog Poop ordered this on eBay, and we still don't know what's in it. But I want to say they're probably all pretty close. So didn't really plan on this being an unboxing video, but you're getting two for one. All right, we got, supposed to be an eight foot kit. So here's our rails. There's a bunch of hardware and something in the styrofoam. Whew, that was a lot of work. Ah, okay, open this up. Oh, this must be the, I'm like, there's no wheels. So there's three pieces of rail. Three pieces of rail and it looks like they fit together this way. And then they have a bolt that goes through them. So I guess you can go as long as you want now. We don't actually have anything to hang it on. We don't have a wall. These are set walls. This is a set on the other side. These walls get taken down all the time, rebuilt, put in different places. We put different things on them for different, different productions. So this is just temporary, but at least you're gonna learn how to do it. So we got some screws, uh, instructions. Let's get started. So stupid me, thinking that we're gonna get eight feet of track and span it across there, not thinking that they're gonna break this up into little pieces. We're gonna need eight feet to attach this to. These pieces apparently go on the back. So we're gonna take an eight foot two by four, put it up high enough and the trick is going to be to get these on the hinge so that we don't have to cut this door because that's just extra work. We try to keep it full size. Looks like we only have to drill four holes in it. Comes with, I don't know if the screws are going to go through, but it shouldn't be too bad. So let me see if I can get this up there. It's going to rest on top of that wall. And on this side, we're going to put some Number nine, three inch exterior screws. We'll put a couple screws in here across a couple beams. That's gonna take a little bit of work getting it level. So you can sit back and watch. And while I'm working, you can have your beer. So we're using grip right long screws. They're for outside building. They're just popular. They use a, a star head or a Torx head and it comes with the pack goes in a drill, we can drill this in. It's a lot stronger than a Phillips head or a flat head. But we should be up here level, double check, make sure you're still level. Put a couple screws in. If you're doing this at home, you're already gonna have a wall. You're not doing it on a movie set. That's just to establish a place to hang the thing. So now this, hangs on this and then we'll bolt it to the, bolt our door to it. I don't really like this. There's probably instructions. Because trying to get this level and put together just 
floor too. It'd be nice if we could just put it all together. Can we? Ah. Why not? What the hell? Let's look at the instructions. Does that mean as much to you as it does to me? <laughs> Warning, caution, but there are literally no words in the instruction sheets, just pictures. So I'm not really sure how to get this level. The only thing we can do is create a line across the wall. So if we, ideally we would run a chalk line if I had two people and we could do a level line or go up there with a level. So I'm gonna go up with a level and a pencil and try to create a line somewhere around the middle of the beam, maybe up toward the top so that we have a line to drill the holes in and then I'll measure I guess we'll put one in, put another one in along that line. Seems like the best course of action to me, but I've never done this before, so I don't know why you're watching this. But isn't that the fun of life? Experiencing new things live on camera. So I'm gonna measure one and a half inches down on the beam. If you're measuring from your ceiling, you can measure whatever distance you want that you want your hinge line to be. And realistically, we could just put a line across there. So the best thing is to take your level and make sure your line is level. Clamp it on if you have a clamp. And that way, if we don't have it straight or our wall isn't straight or our ceiling isn't straight, we're not depending on the measurement, we're using the level to create the line. So that goes almost to the end. I'll move over, finish it. So now we've established the line that we're gonna put the hinges in. Whatever instructions they give you, you're gonna to have to change them anyway and use other pieces because, I mean, this one's showing, this one's showing that these are, uh, that these are Phillips head and they're not. So I don't know if I need a washer. If I don't put a washer, I don't know if these are the washers for it. There's certainly no spacers. I probably want a washer, but there's only four, five, let's say two, four, six, eight. Should work. So we're gonna put a washer on it. So we don't scrape as we're putting it in, scrape the... Make sure you start with the end, because this is gonna be connected to another one. And you'll see this one also has two connections on it. So it can go in between. Make sure you start with your end piece. Washer, bolt, your hardware is gonna be different, no doubt. So this is going to be our rail. And if we line it up with the edge of the board, we know it's gonna go eight feet. Wherever you're gonna put your eight foot span, I'm going to just kind of mark in the middle here where that is. Goodness, I guess we, don't, we only need one spot to start. Then we'll fill it once we're in the other places. So mark the center spot to put one bolt in here and get started. To make it easier, I'm gonna counter drill. I'm gonna drill a hole in here so that I'm not fighting the, the lag bolt. Don't ever walk down a ladder like that. Lag bolt half inch hex head, put a washer on it, go through our hole, put a spacer, that's gonna go into our board. Before we try to screw this into the board using a ratchet, we're gonna drill a small hole. 
Well, it doesn't have to be too big, just something to get you started. And you don't want to over drill it because then you won't be able to, then your screw will come right out because the hole will be too big. Something like that, just to get a starter hole. And if you don't want to drill all the way through, you don't have to. So having this hole gives us an easy way to line up and as we put this in, it's going to be a lot easier to put in. It's like a helicopter blade. So I'm going to use the clamp as my second person to hold this. And as we put this together, it gives us, gives us a pretty close hole. And all we need to do is make sure we have the hole lined up on that line. You can hit it with a hammer a couple times, get it started. It's a little bit harder because since these aren't one piece, can't really get a pilot hole in there for it. It's not the best design, but you want stuff made in China? It's gonna be made in China. I know what you're thinking. Is that gonna hold a 200 pound door? So that looks like it's lined up over here. We can see, if we push this in, it's pretty much on that center line. We'll go ahead, go to the next one and put the other one in. We'll come back and put these back in and then we'll throw the hinges on it and see what it looks like. Again, just put your bolt right on that line, push it in, make sure you're in that right place. This one happens to use a half inch socket a little pressure on it and turn it. Wouldn't it be great if they did a video on it so they showed you how to do it? Okay. Try two. Oh, nice. Actually fits together. Before I put the rest of the screws in, let's put our hinges on it, roll them, make sure there's clearance, and I didn't do it wrong. It looks like that's gonna be okay, and we'll have to bolt our door on this side. So we'll be bolting the door up to probably about here, so it can hang down and not hit. That should be really easy. Let me finish up the bolts, and then we'll get to putting these on the piece of plywood. I would jump down and hang by my fingers, but it would probably rip my fingers off. So the next step is going to be mounting the hinges to the door. And since I want this to come down to a certain distance, I'm going to put a board across the floor or shims, put the board, put the door up, put these on, and then uh, screw them in this way or drill them that way so that I have the exact distance I want. Trying to measure it and figure out how many discs here, what, how far is this going to come down? Just do a mock-up assembly, put it together, drill the holes in it, and then you know exactly what your distance is on the bottom. And watch and see. And this is why I drink beer. We put this up, we put a half inch board underneath, so I have a half inch gap on the bottom. Put it up and we'll put the hinges on it hang them down and mark our holes. Problem is, the top is not straight. Now we know our hinge is level because we leveled it with a level, but our door, obviously our floor isn't straight. So in order to correct that, we're gonna to try to bring this up level using some shims. So these are just wooden shims that they sell at the hardware store, or at Home Depot, Lowe's, 
they can go together and as you put them through this way, they're bigger. They come in plastic, they come in wood, other composites, and this will give us an opportunity to kind of work with that and have different distances and we can stick them together. We're just gonna raise that up. Try to get it level on the top and then put our hinges on. I've got a clamp holding that side. I know I need to go up on this side. I wish I had somebody. Oh, this is heavy. I wish I had somebody helping me, but I don't. Okay. Okay, so now we've shimmed the door, we raised one end, and now you can see it's the same distance all the way across. We would have to be further out to get a level on it, so I'm just basing it on this distance in here. We know the bottom of this is level. As long as that's parallel to it, it's level. So ideally we would put this pretty close to the end so we'd have a lot of balance. We wanna be able to put a stop down here and uh, we're gonna move it in a little bit. So I'm gonna come in six inches. I'm just gonna make a mark at six inches. That's gonna be the center of the hinge. And when I bring that hinge out right there, those are gonna be our two holes. Now this is a little bit difficult because again, I'm one person, but we know this is hanging down straight because it's, well, it's going to hang straight. It's not gonna hang crooked because it's on a bearing. So because this is away from the wall and I'm having trouble with it, I'm going to line up one, and put a screw in it, which is gonna be replaced with a bigger hole. I just put a screw in there clearly too small, but it's doing the job. And then on the top, I'm gonna to drill a hole through, put a 5 8 carriage bolt in the back, washer on the front, tighten it up, and then do the same thing on the bottom, take the screw back out, and do the same thing on that side, and we'll be able to take the pieces out of the bottom and swing it back and forth. We can actually put the top two bolts in, and then have it hang down, and that way we'll know they're straight when we put the bottom one in. So I have one bolt in each one. We're gonna go ahead and take out the spacer on the bottom. And now that it's hanging straight with all the weight down, we can drill the other two holes and we know that the hinges will be straight. We need to put the stops on the end so it doesn't come off the end. But, and we need to put the two bolts up in the top, but it runs pretty smooth. And there you go, Mr. Dog Poop, you have your door. Okay, I will finish it. So they provided a whole bunch of hardware and stuff that, I don't know, I use my own bolts for the door. You might use some different hardware. One thing they didn't include was an Allen wrench. This is the stop for the end. And this goes on the end, it has a little spring in it. So when the door comes to the end, instead of flying off the end of the track, it's actually going to stop. Kind of a novel idea. So that just slides on there, wherever you want your stop to be. If you have a heavy door like that, I'd say give it a little bit of a extra in case it does slide. Somebody slams it. So just tighten up those set screws in that. And it'll bump up against that, hopefully. Well, still have to put some extra holes in it, but you get the idea. 
We're gonna go ahead and drill these last two holes, get these lined up straight. Drill the last two holes, put the bolts in, cut them off, and come back and review the whole project. So if the door is perfectly level, which you know we got it perfectly level, when you let go of it, it's gonna stay. No matter where you put it, it's gonna stay. If it's rolling in one direction or the other, it's not level. Now, how did that happen? I don't know. You just watched me put it in correctly, and yet, that seems to be the low spot. Oh well. Yeah, Mr. Dog Poop, almost done. So yeah, I don't like the fact that it, there's nothing to prevent it from coming off the track. There should be something on the bottom that keeps it. The glass shower doors, they have something on the bottom. I could put a, probably put a hole in there. So this is the hardware that came with the door to attach the door. I ended up using these carriage bolts, but this is going to make a perfect safety stop. Putting it in here and drilling a hole right in here and attaching that to the hinge. It prevents the hinge from the door from going up or pulling out. So I'm gonna drill two holes in here, attach these, and then no matter what happens, if someone bumps the door, hits it, slides it around, or comes riding a bicycle into it, it's not gonna come off the hinge. I don't know why they don't have a safety thing on here, but not a good design. And even if you had something to keep it from going up, you need something to keep it from swinging out. So just a, a Kind of a poor design, you should have had hinges or bearings on the top and bottom. This is a center punch. It's about $3. And you just put it where you want to drill your hole. Push, it's spring loaded, it makes a little indentation and then you can drill in. It's worth its weight in gold. Take a small drill. And it'll center right up into the hole. Great. Fucker! That's why you don't use battery operated. So I'm adding a little bit larger washer on here for safety around the back side. Okay, we broke a drill, had fun getting that hole in there, but it's in. I put a washer on the back side. Now I'm just going to tighten this up to this. And now, it can't come off, there's a washer behind it. And the only way it can lift off as if you break the hinge. So there's no way that that could come off the track as opposed to this one, which just comes off. So since I broke my drill, wore down the battery and I'm exhausted, my beer's almost empty. I'm gonna do that tomorrow. For now, we're done.
So Mr. Dog Poop, I designed it intentionally so it'll always come this way and stay closed. 